someone else to remember is Ron. He's trying to find a vehicle, uh, some type of a, a car of some kind. Uh, so if you can remember him in prayer. Uh, they're negotiating in terms of uh, how much money uh, they're gonna, he's going to get for his old car. Uh, okay. Um, now I'm lost where I am. Is it three, uh, 136? 136? Yeah, 136 at the top, right? Yeah. Um, okay. Um, I'll read the first one. Uh, and welcome to those that are joining us this evening. We're reading from Thoughts from the Mount of Blessing, this beautiful little book. And uh, let us pray for uh, God's presence with us. Heavenly Father, thank you as we read from this little book, these inspired words. May they encourage us to walk closer to you and to, uh, especially on the topic of not judging, but doing. We thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. And the Bible verse is, Therefore all things whatsoever ye would that men should do to you, do ye even so to them. Basically the golden rule. And uh, reading of page 136 at the top, it says, So also with the gifts and blessings of this life, whatever you may possess above your, fellow, above your fellows places you in debt to the degree to all who are less favored. Have we wealth or even the comforts of life? Then we are under the most solemn obligation to care for the suffering sick, the widow, and the fatherless, exactly as we would desire them to care for us where our condition and theirs be reversed. Seems like we read that. Didn't we read that? But I mean, it's, it's a, that's, that is a powerful statement, isn't it? Like, isn't that crazy powerful? I mean, doesn't that really cut across our little selfish hearts? Like, you know, we're, you know, we have all this, you know, we're blessed. And so we enjoy our blessing. But what, what is this saying to us? We're in debt to those that don't have. So we are blessed with, uh, with an abundance, but we're in debt. And it's not a debt to the bank, it's not a loan or whatever, but it's a debt to those who are not blessed the way we are. And uh, that is sobering. Uh, doesn't it, I'll get you in a sec, Mark, uh, Hector. It, it's like, that's very sobering. Another Bible text that is extremely sobering to me is Matthew 25, having to do with uh, as you do it to the least of these, you do it unto me. When I was hungry, you fed me. And the group that are the goats in the story, the second group, uh, that, well, when did we see you hungry and, 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 and not feed you? When did we see you naked and not clothe you? When you didn't do it to those in need, you didn't do it to me. So, so every act of kindness that we extend to others is an act of kindness to Jesus. But it is also very sobering. Like, are we doing all that we can to, re re you know, to relieve the suffering in the world? Now, God doesn't tell us to give everything away, sell your house and give everything away. Then you're now on the street. He's not asking us to be on the street, but he's asking us to, to be generous as I believe he would guide us to be generous. That's how I would see it. Any thoughts on that? Yes, Ken? Oh, oh, sorry, Hector. Far, no, no, Hector. <laughs> Hector was first. <laughs> yeah. I, I think this is the reason why our nation is in trouble, because we are the most blessed nation in the world. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, it seems to me that this, it says we're under the most solemn obligation, mm. which means that the whole purpose of being rich Mm -hmm. is to help those who are in need. Mm -hmm. So the more mm -hmm. we are prospered, 
Mm -hmm. the more we're held accountable for. The more in debt we are. The more in debt we are. The more we're prospered, the more in debt we are. Right. But but the neat thing is we have the prosperity to do it. It's not like we're going to be, it's not like we're going to be penniless and homeless and starving as we help others. Right. And And actually, what does the Bible say? The more you give, the more God showers you with more blessings. Yeah, and this again reminds me of the little, the rich young ruler. He said, take all that you have, give it to the poor, Mm -hmm. come and follow me. Right. So if our minds think about what really is riches, Mm -hmm. it's being in the master's hands. Yes, amen. And so that's where God's trying to help us to see this picture. So I see now having huge bank accounts is not exactly a good thing if it's not being used for his calling. Thank you. Yeah. 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 And it's, uh, you know, I think of ASI and I think of the Sabbath morning uh, offering and it's usually like three million dollars four million dollars sabbath morning offering at asi because uh, they have many projects they sponsor around the world and the people come with that expectation to raise that money that sabbath you know they've made pre-arrangements for that but they you know it's not a large group i mean it's not like a hundred thousand people that are giving that you know three or four million dollars it's uh, i'm not you know maybe 500 people there i'm not even sure it could be a thousand people, but not everyone's able to give, you know, large amounts, but some are. God blesses some, and the people, the ASI mentality is, is God blesses you, 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 you give it, you, you use that to invest in souls, ultimately to be saved. Yeah, very good point. Uh, Ken. Um, I've said this before, but my Uncle John, when I was growing up, he was a lawyer in New Bedford. He was my um, mother's brother. And he is the kindest, generous man I ever know. Um, after after his day at the office, he would go to the grocery store, buy a bunch of groceries, go down to the poor section of town, give them out to the poor people. Wow! The next day, he would go to the gro- to the shoe store, buy all these shoes up, go to the poor people, give them out. Wow! He d- he did this every day of the week. Mm. And and I, I I I just was I was it was mind-boggling to me. Mm-hmm. Uh, he could do this. Mm-hmm. He could afford it, and mm-hmm. he did it. Mm-hmm. And uh, he was a member of the Catholic Church. And then guess what? When he got a divorce from his wife, he had to get a divorce, and then uh, they excommunicated him from the church. Mm. And I thought, oh, the kindest, generous man in the world kicked him out of the church. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah, and, it didn't but, kick him out of Jesus, though. Yeah, no, he didn't kick him out of Jesus. No, he he still had that generous heart. He lived with us for uh, uh, a couple of years. My well, my dad built his house on the Cape Cod, mm-hmm. and uh, so he every time he came to the house, he always had something to bring. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, wow! I praise God. Amen. So he he had that. He was um, no longer. He was not in debt. No. Carol. Yeah. Um, God cares about us so much, and um, one of the uh, scriptures of the day that I have two Bibles on my phone, and Mm -hmm. I get scriptures of the day, and one said, um, God sets the solitary in families. Um, This one day, it's like I got from God, I got um, reassured, you know, what he wants me to do, Um, and, and so I looked it up, you know, what does that mean? And it says, God sees those who live without a close family connection and cares to provide them with families. They may be without husband or wife, without father or mother, or without brother or sister nearby. God cares and has family connections among his people for the solitary. And there's a little more than that. But uh, we've, we have, um, Carl has no family that he can go to. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and, uh, uh, we're making him part of our family and mm-hmm. this just reaffirmed mm-hmm. that that was the right thing to do i asked him over for thanks you know thanksgiving you know and and he was just crying you know wow. and he's he says i don't have a family but you're our, my family you know yeah. and i think that's part of loving people how yeah. god loves them amen beautiful yeah he calls her mother carol Ah. Uh-huh. 
That's right. That's beautiful. That's really what the love of Jesus is all about, isn't it? Making people family. You know, we're family. You know, and uh, that's beautiful. All right, let's move to the next one. The golden rule. I think we that we read this last week, didn't we? Okay, maybe I'm reading it, and uh, maybe we're on the same one on uh, uh, at uh, Umatilla, or maybe I've just been reading anyway. Uh, who'd like to read? Who's next? Glenn, please. By implication. The same truth which is taught elsewhere in the Sermon on the Mount, that with what measure ye meet, it shall be measured to you again. That which we do to others, whether it be good or evil, will surely react upon ourselves in blessing or in cursing. Whatever we give, we shall receive again. The earthly blessings which we impart to others may be and often are, repaid in kind. What we give does in time of need often come back to us in fourfold measure in the coin of the realm. But besides this, all gifts are repaid, even in this life, in the fuller inflowing of his love, Mm -hmm. which is the sum of all heaven's glory and its treasure. And evil imparted also returns again. Everyone who has been free to condemn or discourage will in his own experience be brought over this ground where he has caused others to pass. Mm. He will feel what they have suffered because of his want of sympathy and tenderness. Wow. <laughs> it's, uh, does a word come to your mind that's not a Christian word? What's it called? Karma. Karma. <laughs> but, the, but Jesus' word is... Uh, you reap what you sow. Karma is different. Karma is you're reaping what you sow, but, but the, ultimate goal, the ultimate end of karma is either you go to an advanced stage in your reincarnation, your reincarnation to the next higher stage, or you get demoted to a lower stage. Uh, you know, so that's karma in a Buddhist sense and a Hindu sense. The other element of that whole system is that everybody ultimately is, whether they like it or not, has to go to nirvana like that, you know, like you might say a heaven, but an impersonal heaven. There's no personal God there to welcome you, to give you your crown. You know, it's a place of eternal bliss, but which you don't even feel. So I, I you know, it's, it's sort of interesting, but um, yeah. But it's interesting, but it's, it's really quite something. You reap what you sow. And uh, so it's, it's, it's really quite, uh, quite eye-opening when you read this, you know, from uh, Ellen White's understanding of this that God revealed to her is very amazing, this, the words and how they're put together and, and what, it, what it intends to communicate. Hector. I just want to... I really appreciate you sharing uh, those thoughts because it once again helps us to see whatever is truth from the word of God, there's always a counterfeit or Mm -hmm. something in place of it. Mm -hmm. And that's why it's so difficult for so many to look to Jesus. I see you as a walking miracle Mm -hmm. um, to come from the background that you were from and and finding Jesus. Uh, and, and, And so this is why... It's, I guess it's so important for us, and I ask the Lord, please help me to, to reflect the Lord mm-hmm. in Amen. everything that we do, that they may see Him yeah. and, and desire to know Him better and to see th- He's really the fountain of all truth mm-hmm. and that everything else around us is just like what happened to poor Eve at the tree. Mm-hmm. Um, she, got, she was deceived mm-hmm. uh, because she thought she was going to get greater knowledge elsewhere. Mm-hmm. It's all God is the source of all truth. Yeah, we need to trust in Him. So, yeah, thank you for sharing that. Yeah, uh, Amen. And uh, you know, it's it is amazing that we can have a personal relationship with the Creator of the universe. You know, I mean, and that He hears us. We communicate as if there was no one else. He has a one-to-one connection with us, with billions and billions of people. That's He can do that. 
is God. We have a little tiny bit of understanding of that when you understand how computers work, you know, they're, uh, they're, they're, or AI and all that kind of stuff. I mean, there's just a slight, you can have a slight concept of how fast things can happen and electronically and all that kind of stuff, but nothing's like this because it's the heart of love of God, you know, and he wants to fill us with that love. And he wants us to be generous and he wants us to give because that way he can, f sometimes he fills us back with more of the material things. But what was, the, uh, what was it said here that we will be filled with when we give? When we give of our time, of our energy, our resources, whatever we give, what does it, it uses a word here. For, yeah, they come back fourfold. And there was something else that just in case it doesn't come back like in monetarily, it always comes back um, uh, in, let's see, it used the word outflow. In the, okay, it says here, but besides this, all gifts are repaid, even in this life, in the fuller inflowing of his love. So we are filled with his love. So do not be afraid to help others and give and show the love of Jesus. Don't be afraid to do that because it, it is Jesus. The only one that will make you fearful of doing that is who? Satan. Satan. He does not want us to be generous and kind. You know? Uh, so well, it's, it's pretty amazing. Let's carry on. Who wants to read next? Tamara wants to read. I can tell. And then Debbie does. And then we'll get the three young ladies in the back, back row there. <laughs> it is the love of God toward us that has decreed this. He would lead us to abhor our own hardness of heart and to open our hearts to let Jesus abide in them. And thus, out of evil, good is brought, and what appeared a curse becomes a blessing. Mm hmm well, thoughts on that? Just a quick thought here, and this hmm. sh that's a short paragraph. But once again, I'm noticing that it's not me, it's him. Mm -hmm. He is the one that will lead us. We have to place our eyes on him. Mm -hmm. We have to turn our thoughts toward him, and he will work. So... Uh, it's like what you said. It's a relationship, mm -hmm. and it's through that relationship that we grow. Uh, I, I guess I can think of moments when I have to remember that. Sometimes when I'm so focused on what I'm doing that I'm ignoring everything else, mm -hmm. and if somebody bothers me, it's like it bothers me that I'm somebody's breaking my concentration. <laughs> and I thought, wait a minute. I just made this my idol. Mm. I'm giving it all my thoughts at the end. I don't care about those who are around me. That's mm -hmm. not a good thing. That's a so, very good observation. So I said, Lord, help me to keep my eyes, to keep you always on my mind mm -hmm. that nothing else takes over so much. Yeah, amen. Amen. Uh, interesting, it says here, and thus out of evil, good is brought. And what appeared a curse becomes a blessing when we're obedient to God. Sometimes he asks us to do things that seem to be a curse, you know, like, I can't do that. It's impossible, you know. But if we will just act by faith, like, the de like not the demoniac, well, the demoniac was crying out for deliverance but couldn't speak because the demons were speaking through him. And Jesus read his heart. But I, everyone is crying out for deliverance. Every human being captivated by Satan's lies is really crying out for help and deep in their heart. And Jesus is trying to reach their, you know, reach them and he wants and he wants to use us to be the hands and feet and love of Jesus. Let's carry on. I think the ladies at the back are wanting to read. I think Debbie, for sure Debbie wants to write after, but not yet. <laughs> <laughs> the standard of the golden rule is the true standard of Christianity. Anything short of it is a deception. Wow. 
a religion that leads men to place a low estimate upon human beings whom Christ has esteemed of such value as to give himself for them, a religion that would lead us to be careless of human needs, sufferings, or rights, is a spurious religion. In sliding the claims of the poor, the suffering, and the sinful, we are proving ourselves traitors to Christ. It is because men take upon themselves the name of Christ while in life they deny his character that Christianity has so little power in the world. The name of the Lord is blasphemed because of these things. Wow. This is amazing. This is like, it is, it's just incredible. Um, uh, who do you think of when you read what, what was just written here? Who is a, is a very prominent, famous individual that had something to say about Christianity, about Jesus and about Christians. He was from India. His name was Mahatma Gandhi. And what did Jesus say? Do you remember what he said? Uh, what, not Jesus, but what did Mahatma Gandhi say? He said, well, it was something like that. And I didn't hear it. He might have said that too. But the, the, fa the famous quote is, I, I, I really like or love your Jesus, but, but, but not your Christians. Someone can Google that just quickly. This is Mahatma Gandhi. I, I, love your, I love your Jesus. But, you know, in other words, he has seen so much hypocrisy. So many Christians, and this is, what it's, this is exactly what she's saying. The standard of the golden rule is a standard of Christianity, anything short of it is a deception. If we're not doing to others as we'd have them do unto you. Wow, that would, that would change everything. You know, a, a religion that leads men to place a low esteem upon human beings whom Christ has, est has esteemed of such value as he gave his, give himself for them a religion that would lead us to be careless of human needs, suffering, and rights is a spurious religion. Can you imagine if the Seventh-day Adventist church with 20 million people, so-called, maybe 10 million active, would embrace this truth and would today uh, begin to live this in reality but why do we need to have the whole church do it? Why don't we do it here? Let's look at what this means. You know, community service, our community service department would be a very active department you know, as, as, we, as we embrace these principles and as we generously bless our community in different ways. Uh, I think that we could really see transformation, you know, of the love of Christ. We need to really pray about that. Okay, what does it say? I like your Christ. I do not like your Christians. Your Christians are so unlike your Christ. Wow. Isn't that something? Yeah. But that's exactly what this is saying. It's a deception. If we're, because they weren't following the golden rule. They were not doing to others that they would have them do unto you. Uh, so, you know, it's interesting. Mahatma Gandhi could easily be in the kingdom and all those so-called Christians uh, or not, including could be even us, you know, why not? Uh, so it's, it's really something to see that. Any other thoughts on this? It's so it's such a profound paragraph here. Profound. Yeah. Sherry, Sherry Lynn. Sherry Lynn, Sherry Lynn. Sometimes uh, we see people on the street and we don't want to be bothered. I mean, I was um, guilty of that uh, the other night. There was this lady approaching the car and she was in tears and you know I thought I don't have any cash on me I, you know why would I wind down the window I'm not mm -hmm. and so I wound down the window and I says I can I don't have any cash but I can go get you something to eat and she says I don't want something to eat I just want to call 911 I'm having such terrible belly pain and spider bite and you could see she was in distress mm -hmm. So I did call 911 and I wait till they got there. Mm -hmm. But, you know, sometimes we're just not willing, mm -hmm. but the Lord, you know, rests it on our hearts to, mm -hmm. to help those that are, you know, 
yeah. less fortunate, right. I suppose. So and they did take her to the yeah. hospital. Good. So. Good. And that was great. That it was very nice of you to, to talk to her, even though you didn't have the money, you rolled the window down and, um, and was willing to help with food. Um, yeah, it's, it's really a challenging thing. Um, you give them five dollars and they go and or, buy some yeah, some exactly. drugs, you know. Exactly. It's, so um, that's why I like salt. You know, maybe at the church we should help the salt organization, which is Adventist. It's an Adventist outreach for the for homeless people in downtown. I think that uh, I think that central church. Central central they church. Have showers. They take yeah. Portable showers. Yeah, portable showers, portable laundry mat. I mean, it's all kind of stuff. They're doing a lot of really neat stuff. They're getting large grants now, like million dollar grants, or, or large, or maybe not quite a million, but they're large anyway. They're doing a lot of good stuff. But um, it's, it's how to help, so, sort of how to help the helpless. And uh, like it's, there's a lot in the Ministry of Healing on helping the homeless and helping the helpless and helping the intemperate and all that kind of stuff, but never give up on anybody. Uh, let's carry on. Uh, yes. But if you look at Christ's words here, that it's not, you're not helping them for your glory. You're helping them because if you look at it that way, sometimes you're so discouraged by, you know, what they might turn around and do or something mm -hmm. like that. But you can't mm -hmm. look at that. Mm -hmm. You know, whatever good you do, mm -hmm. it follows. In it's in not from words, the same person, yeah. but you never know. Right. So. In other words, give the $5 even if they may go use it on drugs, I don't know. No, <laughs> I'd no. Buy an um, but maybe, <laughs> but maybe, a gift card with food, a food gift card, like a ten dollar, uh, you know, McDonald's card or whatever, you know, uh, you know what I'm saying? Yes. In other words, that yes. would be, yes. uh, you know, they can't, yeah, they can't use that as a drug. Right. So, or a five dollar or a ten dollar, you know, oral. Publix card or a Winn Dixie card or something like that, you know, that might be a way to help people without giving them cash. And then, really, then you're not helping them, you're really hurting them, you know, enabling them. And, and then, if you have time, find out what exactly is going on in their life, you know, that would be helpful too. Let's read the last, uh, we'll just read one more little paragraph here and then we'll call it a night. Sorry. Did we didn't get, did we get everyone? No, we had the three girls down there. Debbie will do next week. <laughs> okay, Iris. Search heaven and earth. Uh, and no. Of of the apostate apostolic. That's too long of the apostolic church in those bright days when the glory of the risen Christ shone upon them. It is written that no man said that all of the things which he posed was his own. Neither was there any among that them that lacked, and with great power gave the apostle witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus and great grace was upon them all and they continuing daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house did eat their meat with gladness and sickness of heart praising God and having favor with all the people and the Lord added to the church Daily, such as should, should be safe. Mm -hmm. Act four thirty two thirty four. All those. Mm -hmm. Wow. So tell me what your thoughts are on this one. <clears throat> yes, Tamara. Yeah, what it's saying is that um, when you're a member of a church, that. Uh, everyone in the church should be helping each other have something to eat and sharing with them. And um, 
I that's that's what I get from it is that if one person in the church is struggling, then others should be coming around them. them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that uh, you know what did they say about charity? Charity means love. So charity begins where? At home. At home. So charity should happen should begin in God's church. To begin with charity. Yes, Glenn. interest daily in the temple daily in the church mm -hmm. we come to church once or twice a week they're right. daily in the church Amen. daily in the temple yes. and also they went house to house eating together mm -hmm. when was the last time we did that amen let's uh let's do a reformation let's uh, arrange uh i know there's certain social thing where you go around from house to house and eat a little bit here and a little bit there <laughs> Charlotte. Also, with just about in the same sentence, they were together with one accord. Yes. And that would be wonderful. Yes. And, you know, I think it, as we are generous and as we are uh, giving to our own church family, the Bible says to remember the household of faith. Remember? Yes. The household of faith. So, you know, charity begins at home, the household of faith. So we really need to be praying about this. Are there people right now in need? I'm thinking of Ron, you know, what, what more can we do for Ron and, uh, and uh, Amber? You know, is there any more we can do for them? You know, I mean, Ron hasn't got a job yet. He's been applying all over the place and hasn't got a job yet um, and certain things. So, you know, we, do we, you know, do we let people wait for, you know, anyway. Okay, then we're gonna close. Yeah, just very quickly. I think I need to pray about this line here where it says that odd of the things which he Possessed was his own. Mm -hmm. I don't know what that means to me today. That I didn't think of something as being mine, but it's 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 to be shared. That that's an interesting. It is. <laughs> uh, I'm definitely going to have to pray about this one to understand that better. It's interesting. What comes to my mind on that one is you know the World Economic uh, Forum. Is that what they call it? World Economic Klaus Schwab. Uh, he's, you know, they're, and they're, uh, the United Nations agenda, 30, 30, 2030 agenda and all that stuff. Uh, I hear them saying the words, you will own nothing and be happy. That's interesting. That's interesting. You'll own nothing and be happy. Like, you know, could, I, could a church community be something like that? I'm not saying we own nothing, but we have all things in common. We, we share, and what is the words that you said? Um, ought, that ought of the things which he possessed was his own. But I have a thought about that. Yeah. This is the sort of thing that is not dictated by law right. or by man. <laughs> it's not taken it from is, you. Yes, it's it not is, taken it, from you. It is, you give it out it, of love. So you have the counterfeit. Yeah, communism is wrong. Truth. You do not give, there, you don't force people to do this. Right. This has to be Jesus. Uh, in, uh, motivated by our love for Jesus and right. our desire to heed the calling of his spirit. Yes. He is the one that is leading in all these things. It's yeah. not man yeah. dictating Thank anything. Thank you. I'm in big trouble tonight because look how late we are. Oh, I know, there's only one more paragraph. Is it really? Okay. Talk to my friends. <laughs> Talk to the people that used to be my friends. Okay, let's read that. Lindy, I think you should read it. <laughs> Search heaven and earth, and there is no truth revealed more powerful than that which is made manifest in works of mercy to those who need our sympathy and aid. This is the truth as it is in Jesus. When those who profess the name of Christ shall practice the principles of the golden rule, the same power will attend the gospel as in apostolic times. Wow. <laughs> Something I get out of this. You know, we talk about the latter rain. We talk about praying for the latter rain. And we think that's power just to preach the three angels' message. But what is it really saying? It's power to live this message, the golden rule, to love and to be generous and to, and to care and to, and to give and to, you know, meet people's needs. 
That's, that's because they, to have the characteristics that they had uh, all things in common. So that's, that's amazing. That's, who's, let's stand together and then we'll, we'll, we'll um, sing and then have prayer. Is that what we generally do? We pray and then sing. How do we sing and then pray? Let's try it. Precious Lord, what a wonderful time uh, we've had this evening because we have really been touched by your Holy Spirit and the, what the living the golden rule is all about. So Lord, help us to come to, to really to digest and to meditate and to understand these beautiful principles that really, Lord, we just need a fresh touch of your Holy Spirit and then this will become a reality in our lives and you will bless us more abundantly than we've ever known. We thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. We pray, take everyone safe home. We pray for Joyce, especially tonight, that you would help her to uh, be feeling better soon. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.